So we're back with a brand new format, and already there is totally busted broken garbage. Now despite this deck realistically being completely broken beyond all belief, it's also extremely swingy. You either entirely win, or you entirely lose. So it's difficult to justify banning this deck, but at the same time, you really should not be able to do what this deck allows you to do. And given the extreme meme stats of this deck, I think it was worthwhile just getting out of the way before we can really dig our teeth into the real decks of the format. Now as ever, if you enjoyed the video, maybe you should give it a like. If you really enjoyed the video, maybe you should subscribe. And if you really, really enjoyed the video, you can follow us on Twitch, Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description. So here we are at the deck list and as you know, it's the Tybalt's Trickery deck. So you either know about this deck or you don't at this, at this point. But this is the Tybalt's Trickery <sighs> busted garbage deck. Essentially how it works is you have two mana, any two mana. You play Tormod's Crypt, and well, that's on the stack for zero mana. Uh, you play Tybalt's Trickery. You then count, you use Tybalt's Trickery to counter your own Tormod's Crypt. And essentially this just lets you cast a random busted card from your deck. So you counter a spell, the, the Tormod's Crypt, choose one, two or three at random. Then you mill that many cards. Doesn't matter, that part is completely relevant. Then you... Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with a different name, so a different name from the Tormod script. So you can't recast a Tormod script, however you can play Tybalt's Trickery and then sometimes hit another Tybalt's Trickery. Which is why people are now playing this version of the deck, where instead of it just being lands, uh, Tybalt's Trickery, Tormod script and Ugin, it is lands that and also many 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 other things that you can cast off Trickery. Meaning that your chances are you're never going to hit a trickery off a trickery. Now this might all sound kind of confusing and I guess it, like it sort of is. But when you just watch how the deck works, it's ridiculous. You either completely win or you can completely lose. You can just play whatever the fuck you want. The best thing to hit is either Mergent Ultimatum or Genesis Ultimatum as you'll see. But basically hitting almost any one of these cards automatically wins you the game. I suppose hitting Chromatic Ori is like the, the weakest thing that you could hit aside from a trickery, like just as a single card off the top. However, the reason why I'm playing this, I mean, you can kind of play whatever you want, to be entirely honest. You could also be playing uh, Iska, God of the Tree. Uh, you can hit this off trickery and you can bring it in for its backside, so the Prismatic Bridge, and then essentially it kind of just gives you a trickery every turn. But the reason why I'm not playing that is, say you get a bunch of lands, then if you hit Chromatic Aura, you can just start casting the things that you have drawn from your hand. It comes up, but ultimately it just doesn't really matter because if you don't hit at least something on turn two or three, you just kind of lose the game. And I think that's about as much as this deck really deserves to be spoken about. I think we should just get into the gameplay, show you how it works, and just show you how unbelievably swinging this deck is. So, we're into game one here, and I just want the first couple of uh, clips that you're going to see are essentially just highlighting how swingy, I mean, every clip is going to highlight how swingy the deck is, but this is specifically in terms of how easy it is to win and how easy it is to lose. So in this case, I got unimaginably lucky and managed to get the Tormod script on the first draw. Now that's like crazily unlikely, but again, this deck is just entirely that. That is just how this deck operates. And as soon as Cure Best of Sea God comes down, it's just, it's just unoutable, so... Your opponent just isn't going to be able to do anything. Now, as you can see, the next game is just a case of, right, Mulligan seven hands, I don't get the combo pieces, next game. Simple as that. Like, that is just how this operates. And if you can get the Tybalt's Trickery plus Tormod's Crypt in your opening hand, then that allows you to win. And currently, I'm undecided on whether on how many Mulligans you should really go to. I guess five, and then you put five cards back and just hope that Tormod's Crypt and... Uh, Tybalt's Trickery is in your hand, I guess you can't really survive on any less than that. So I guess five maximum mulligans and any more than that, you, you pretty much just automatically lose. But in this case, I did manage to get the Mergent Ultimatum. And there you go. That was like, that's literally like two minutes, bang, up, up two ranks. Easy peasy. Now, this is just showing you how a lot of the time this just won't work as well. It is about 50-50 in terms of like match win-loss rate, which is way higher than it ought to be anyway, which is why this deck as a whole kind of just worries me. Now something I do want to just mention is now, I hope you quite enjoy this particular format of the video where it's clips I already have and it's me kind of analysing and go over, going over them. 
Uh, personally, I prefer doing it this way because I can get better footage and make it more concise. Uh, you know, the videos just flow a little bit better. Anyway, in this case, I do get a good game. And game one, I go in, get the good hand, get uh, Emergent Ultimatum, get Tibble. And again, uh, when you use Emergent, Emergent Ultimatum on the Tibble card, you can pick either the front or back side on what one you want to put in, which is just like super broken. Now here we go, I don't actually... In this case, I'm like, right, okay, I've got two Tower 1's crypts, and I'm super, by the way, I'm super inconsistent in what I keep and what I don't keep. It's literally just what I'm feeling at the time. And in this case, I'm like, I've got two Tower 1's crypts. Maybe I'll get the, the trickery. Turn 4 is about as long as you can wait for this deck. Uh, as soon as it gets to, like, turn 5, no matter what you cast, unless you manage to get Emergent Ultimatum, which is... Emergent Ultimatum and Genesis Ultimatum are, like, the two best cards that you can hit off the deck, realistically speaking. But if you can't get them by turn, like I said, like turn four, you just you just lose, really. Um, now, there is another thing to mention when it comes to this deck. You can essentially, like, Tybalt's Trickery is the more important card to get in your hand because you can turn four the combo by using uh, the Tybalt's Trickery plus the two mana half of the Tybalt Planeswalker. I cannot remember what the... <laughs> Well, the name of the, the card is, but the, the one where the front side is like the two mana guy. So it means you can cast that, counter it with Tybalt's Trickery, and then go off on turn four. Um, again, I would only have, this is only good if you're going first as well. Uh, it's less effective if you're on the play, because your opponent gets their turn four, then it's your turn four. So, uh, in this case, I, I just like, I, it's just like, I lose. Um, I'm just hoping to God that I can draw the trickery, but at this, at this point, it is his turn four. He's like, getting cards out of my hand, and then he's able to set up and make the push way before I'm able to do anything, like, anything even remotely useful in terms of furthering my own game state. So, it's, it's, <laughs> again, you know, I just need to reiterate, like, this deck is going to be a problem. It will probably burn itself out in terms of its, um, novelty appeal but as i was just trying to play the game obviously it's going to feel very much like you're constantly losing to this by people going up oh, turn two get the combo and it feels so bad and as you see there bang i just can't do it and then mulligan nope mulligan nope and then we need to wait because he takes quite a while uh to do to do their mulligan mulligan again well, again, again, nope, nope, I get three tricky, nope, ah, that's it, you just can't do it. Now, theoretically, I guess you could also counter Tybalt's Trickery with Tybalt's Trickery, but then you run the risk of hitting a Tormod's Crypt, but I guess that works with, um, with anything, really. The whole, like I mentioned earlier, um, if you counter Tormod's Crypt, you can't recast a Tormod's Crypt, but you could hit a Tybalt's Trickery, in which case it just fizzles itself out, and that is in of itself like a kind of a big issue with the deck but again you've got so many other things that the chances of that happening are extremely low. Now uh, something to bear in mind is it's n also not worthwhile using like Stone Coil Serpent and Tormod's Crypt because as an example say you cast the Stone Coil Serpent and then counter that with Tybalt's Trickery and then you run the risk of hitting either one and being able to cast it so you could counter a stone coil and then you could hit the Tormod's Crypt and cast it and that just does nothing so you need to kind of bear that in mind. Now this is an example of a game where it was a slow start but I do the combo on turn four and it is just enough to pull the game for me so just remember this uh, and <laughs> there this is the prime example actually this is why I kept this one in because I, I counter the two mana guy and then I hit the Tormod's Crypt Obviously, like, why wouldn't I? And because of that, I just can't win the game. So, just bear that in mind, really. So, here we go, mulligan hard. And I'm like, right, I just, I just need to keep this hand. Great. Now, unbelievably, you can still win from this scenario. So, it's not entirely worthwhile just straight up scooping. But if you end up, if you're on your, if you're on your fifth mulligan and you get the trickery and like anything else, you can still win as long as you draw four lands in a row. <laughs> now in this case, I get the Tormod's Crypt as part of the, the, the draws, but at the same time, like, they're still not great. 
as you can see, is already on his turn four. So when it comes to my turn four, it's just, it's, uh, generally speaking, it won't be enough. But hit the emergent ultimatum, you can, you, you can bring it back. So, uh, but unbelievable. Like, you would never expect that I could win from this scenario. Um, you might be wondering why the Yadaro's in there. I, like I said, you can kind of play like a whole bunch of stuff. The Yadaro is simply because you can cycle it out of your hand. It's also just like a big uh, one color guy that you can summon off Emergent Ultimatum. Now, something I didn't mention earlier in the like the deck analysis is the that three cost legendary where the backside of it is like five colors and it just lets you do a, a trickery every turn. That is also a one color thing that you can hit off Emergent Ultimatum. So just bear that in mind. So you could play Yadaro or you could play that. But probably playing the other one is maybe better because Yudaro isn't particularly great to hit off Emergent Ultimatum, but it's also like a giant guy that you deal with, so it's, it's just kind of just play whatever you like, really. It doesn't, it literally just doesn't matter because the power level is just like so potentially high that changing one or two cards is, is just irrelevant, right? Now, Cura Best to Sea God is actually a, like hitting that off Emergent Ultimatum and th this kind of scenario is like perfect because it allows you to be able to stay alive. Now we're on to the next game, and the reason why I've kept this particular game in it is because I really wanted to highlight just how good this Sea Serpent card is. Like, it is unbelievably good. Now, again, we're mulliganing down to five because I was like, you know what, right, I've got the mana to cast the two mana guy in Tybalt's Trickery. We'll just go off turn four, but then we, we high roll and we get the Tormod script. Now, something to bear in mind is when you're mulliganing like five cards and you put five back, you're increasing your deck size by five, which essentially dies loots the percentage chance of them being able to draw the Tormod script. It's a really, there's probably like a mathematically like correct amount of mulligans. It's probably three. I would imagine if you don't get it by three, you should just take what you can get and just try and uh, sift through your deck via all the um, the temples that you've got because you're playing all the temples just so you can like sc scry scry and then hopefully by like turn three or four get the other part of the combo you need but as you can see this serpent crazy cards unbelievable i think a deck based around actually just legitimately turboing this card out via ramp is actually probably a, a pretty good idea now what you saw there was me actually fucking up its effect and accidentally hitting the thing that i was supposed to uh, sacrifice with the target effect so you, you target the thing you want to tap first and then you sacrifice but i'd done it the other way about um so uh, i mean i'm the only person that's ever gonna fuck that up so you don't need to worry <laughs> but yeah like the card is just like crazy so he goes to like hit a thing costs no mana so just sacrifice it and just tap his guy anyway it, it's insane the card's actually incredible every upkeep you make a guy and there we go. It's just too much pressure. The card's ridiculous. Now, on to the next clip. And for this one, I just wanted to show how good the the Tibble Planeswalker is. That alone can also just allow you to win games. And again, this is one of the uh, the slower start games. And I just want to put these in just to highlight, like, it isn't completely bust if you don't get the combo by turn two. So just to, you know, bear that in mind and don't, like, be com completely demoralized. Although, I mean, in, in this case, I do get the combo turn two, but... Uh, he manages to hold hold me off for a, quite a quite a long time. Surprisingly, I don't really understand how that happened. But we get the Yudaro down, and we get the Tablet guy down, and it just allows us to completely control the game uh, from this point onwards. It's really quite devastating, uh, especially the ultimate. So he manages to hag them all on the guy. So that's how, and he might hits the Tablet down. So. Actually, he's in, like, not the worst position ever. Certainly not the best position ever, if I'm able to get the combo off again. But, um, I, I just use the, the Tibble Planeswalker. Getting it out that early is just enough to, like, completely control. It's, it's actually ridiculous. When it comes in, you just get the emblem, like, automatically. It's so dumb. It's, it's actually not a busted card. It's just very, very good. I think for seven mana, it is, like, fair. Um, but I don't think it's, like, game-breaking. But this, in conjunction with this combo, you could certainly justify it as such. It's also quite funny as well because I'm taking all his removal off him. But at this point, I'm like, right, well, I can't actually make a push. I need to be able to do the combo again. Now, uh, then we'd, we ultimate this guy and 
from this point on, my hand is now like 40 cards. <laughs> and because it gives you 3 mana, I'm able to just, like, I think I think a Genesis Ultimatum there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but aye, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Now, the fact that I haven't just straight up won by this point is honestly baffling me a little bit. Um, but I guess it is, it is what I, like, I've de facto won by this point, right? Because, because I can't lose at this point. <laughs> just because I haven't won doesn't mean I'm gonna lose. <laughs> so we put out the big serpent guy again because it's, like, completely baller. We get out another... Ugin and frankly the fact that he didn't quit is uh, shocking, like I don't really understand how he thinks he could win. I'd just be on to the next game by this point. But as you can see this uh, Tiblet card is really, really good, especially because it allows you to just play things for whatever colour of mana, like how is that fair at all? Now, I can't quite remember how I kill him. Oh, right, so he taps, like, his own guys, which means I definitely kill him. I don't think he's read what this Sea Serpent thing actually does. Um, and then, for, so for some reason, I'll also then opt to just play. <laughs> oh, wait, I had to do this, because I can only do six damage to him. So now I can, like, tap his last guy and kill him. Pretty swish way of winning the game, I think. Now, this last clip is hilarious. Um... <laughs> And I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it's just, it's probably the last thing that this deck can, like, do is, like, a little, I guess, trick, I suppose. So we're up against Mill, and Mill can be, frankly, devastating, especially on, like, a kind of shitty opening hand such as this. Because they can just mill the Tormod script, and that, you ain't going to have a good time if that happens. Now, I'm pretty sure in this case, I probably do, like, counter a trickery with a trickery. I imagine that's what happens. Oh no, we just get the Tormod script. Right, well. But I, in this case, I could have, like, trickery to trickery. Then we just, like, massively go off with two Kioras. It's so dumb. But remember, he is playing Demir, so he can just play a board wipe, but just trickery and counter it. <laughs> Which is so hilarious. So beyond hilarious, and even though he hits a counter off Trickery, like, Trickery resolves, counters his thing. <laughs> so ridiculous that I was able to do that. <laughs> because otherwise he would probably have won if we're being entirely honest. So, oh god, I mean, if I was him, I'd be just so, so raging, but... That is it, that is the deck, and that is also the video. Because there's not so much else to do here. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the format of this video because I certainly enjoy making the video in this format. So if you made it this far, thanks a lot. Big appreciate. And uh, yeah, I guess like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and stick around for more videos in the future. Uh, so aye, thanks a lot. And I'll see you guys later.